So we now know that there's a right to use assets if you take substantially all the benefits, you direct it, uh, and that the supplier can't substitute it at a gain, then doesn't matter how long the lease is, you've got a right to use asset. And similarly, you've got a lease liability. Now remember, there are those two exemptions as well for short-term, less than 12 months leases, and low value, less than $5,000 leases. But I'm not worried about that at the moment. I'm looking at forgetting the exemptions. How much more detail can we go into with this lease liability and this right to use asset? So what is the lease liability? Well, the lease liability is the present value of your future lease payments. Simple as that, that's, that's quite okay. Discounted down at the rate implicit in the lease, as we call it. So, you've got these future payments, but the next question is, yeah, all right, but what are these future payments? What could they be? Well, they could be your fixed payments, and you'd be thinking to yourself, hang on, what's a fixed payment? And a fixed payment is, you've got to pay four lots of 1,000 per annum for, you know, for four years. That's it, they're fixed. Simple as that, it's just a normal payment. So obviously that's a future payment. But you do get some that are variable. Meaning you only, or you pay an amount that depends on something else happening. So it's not fixed, but it depends on something else happening. So the only time that you can include these, depending on something happening ones, these variable ones, is if that variability is to do with an index or a rate. So such as the, uh, the amount you pay increases in line with the inflation rate, increases in line with interest rates, okay, that sort of thing. Another future payment, and by the way, those that aren't indexes or rates, then they just get taken to the uh, income statement as an expense, all right? So you've got fixed, variable if it depends on an index or rate, Another uh, future payment that you'll have is a residual value. So that's the asset at the end, at the end of the lease, the residual value. If you guarantee a residual value, well, that's a future lease payment to you, isn't it? So that's one of the payments that we're going to have to take into account and discounts. Also, there might be a purchase option, meaning that, I don't know, you've got a five-year lease, but after three years, you can buy it. Now... The amount you can buy it for, well, do you include that as a future lease payment? Yes, if reasonably certain that you're going to take it. If you're reasonably certain that you're going to buy it, well, that's a future lease payment then, isn't it? And finally, any termination, so terminating the lease, any termination penalties, you would include those again, if probable, that you're going to have to pay them. Okay, so they're the five things that make up your future payments. You discount them down and then, so you add all those together, discount them down. And then you take that figure there and you add it on to your assets. That's the first line in your right to use assets is whatever your lease liability plus that. Okay, now add it on to the asset as well is any uh, initial direct costs of buying it. So if you've been negotiating the lease or something like that, then add those on. Take off any incentives that you've been given to take the lease. So if there's any incentives received, just take those off. Plus any dismantling costs at the end. You sometimes hear these called restoration costs as well. So that's the cost of your asset. Okay, so that's your right to use asset and your lease liability. Now, we're going to go through those all in a lot more detail, but I just want you to get the bigger picture at the moment.